Ah, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. What a delightful turn of phrase. You've no doubt heard someone say that throughout your lifetime, but I need you to do me a favor. The next time you hear someone say that, I need you to immediately approach that person and get up in their face and say, oh yeah, prove it, bitch. Today's video is about someone who was so hungry that if given the opportunity, they wouldn't just eat all of the horse meat in one sitting, but they'd also chomp into the skin, the bones, the hair, the hooves, the nose, the eyes, the organs, the teeth, the blood, and even the delicious feces churning within it. For you see, there once was a tiny little French baby boy named Terare, a skeletal child who all but proved there is no god within his lifetime, because he was able to eat anything and everything, forever, even things that should have killed him. This is not a video of Terare, this is a small Asian child eating a bunch of different things. So it's important to note for this video that we don't have an official likeness or portrait or anything of Terari, and we only know what he looked like based on really general descriptions. And for the rest of the video, any pictures of people I'm going to use are just famous paintings of people eating things throughout history. But I don't know who this boy is. I don't know why there are so many videos of him eating food. I'll get you one day, you weird boy. Terari slithered out of his mother's abortion bucket sometime around the year 1772. We have to guess when this inhuman hell spawn found its way to the mortal realm, because while we do know Terari was an actual person, we don't know if Terari was his actual name or a nickname. What we do know is that that motherfucker could eat from the moment his teeth decided that they had enough time chilling in his jaws and needed to tear into something. Terari ate so much food that he gained an astonishing zero pounds. Somehow he was able to eat an absolute absurd amount of meals and always appeared skinny, gaunt, and ready for more. It was claimed that he could sometimes eat as much as a quarter of an entire cow in one sitting. <laughs> so hot, Hogbees, you claim fanning yourself with paper copies of all those old-timey stocks and bonds that you own in the meat industry that help you keep the sweat off of your monocle. Cows today weigh four far more than cows from the 1770s. This is probably a large tale of folklore and exaggeration. Well, I did the math and the Googling, and actually I didn't do any math. I used the Microsoft calculator app. The average cow today weighs about 1,000 to 1,800 pounds, depending on the breed and the conditions the cow is raised in. According to estimates that I could find before the standardization of modern farming techniques, cows typically weighed an average of 600 to 800 pounds. So if we take even the smallest, idiest, middiest cow on record, Terrari found himself as a feisty, 10-year-old child wolfing down about 150 pounds of big boy beef at dinner time. Yeah, you see these? You see all these? These are hungry man frozen dinners. They're pretty much exactly a pound of food in each box. Go buy one. Go eat it. Go resist the urge to vomit because you just ate a hungry man. And then think if you had to eat at least 149 more of those for dinner every single night. Good luck, Tubby. So what's a struggling parent to do when their child eats about their body weight in meat every single night? Well, it's easy. You calmly and quietly abandon your child in the hopes that they'll die in the streets unattended. Terari's parents took note of his voracious lifestyle and said, fuck this, I'm out, promptly kicking him out of the house because they couldn't afford to provide for him. But Terari was resourceful, and more importantly, Terare was pretty fucking bizarre. So he proclaimed, the lovely thieves and prostitutes of this fine country shall provide for me. And so they did. Terare joined joined a traveling performance troupe of pickpockets and pussy peddlers, deciding to turn his inhuman hungers into hard-earned cash. The act was simple. Terare did this! I will swallow anything, and I need anything you people throw. <laughs> 
please. No more spark plugs. Now this clip may or may not be entirely historically accurate to Terraris act. The yellow skin is something we could debate on whether or not Jaundice was a part of Terraris incredible laundry list of medical anomalies from all of his eating maladies, which would maybe give him the sunlight glow of melanin that the Simpsons suffer from. But definitively, I unfortunately have to mention that the spark plug wasn't invented until 1860. So if he happened to swallow any of those thrown at him by an 18th century French peasant audience, he effectively destroyed the only prototype of one of the most influential machine parts ever designed. Whatever, Terrari still got his bonus points because if Bart told him to eat his shorts, he'd actually do it. Not in a creepy hashtag me too sort of way. The crowd would throw rocks, corks, bits of trash, all sorts of things at Terrari, and he would gobble them up. One story specifically mentions he ate a fan's entire basket of apples and then still asked for more food. Other tales mention that the dude would pick up stray animals while performing and swallow them as well. One eyewitness account describes either Terrari's act or a recent episode of Itchy and Scratchy. He seized a live cat with his teeth, eventrated it, sucked its blood, and ate it, leaving the bare skeleton only. In about 30 minutes, he rejected the hairs in the manner of birds of prey and carnivorous animals. Terrari's career as a freaky foodie was so illustrious that he even got to star in the third iteration of the Metal Gear Solid trilogy, as he confessed his favorite snack was snake meat, and his bravery shown during Operation Snake Eater led him to preventing thermonuclear war in 1964. In summary, Terrari would do his circus sideshow acts while the pilferers in his troupe would pickpocket the spectators and the prostitutes in his ring would score some action on the side. Nothing pops a boner like watching a man reverse vomit some garbage. Terrari had a job that was good. So good that he eventually moved to Paris to up the ante on his performances. And everyone was happy. Except Terrari, because his newfound employment somehow ended him up in the hospital. It's a fucking mystery. The story of how he got there is actually pretty funny too. He suffered a wholly unsurprising bowel obstruction in the middle of an act and was carried by the onlookers to a nearby hospital, where he was given industrial strength laxatives. And then he pooped. <clears throat> he poopied. <laughs> Big smelly poopy came out of his butt. Yucky dirty brown poopy came out. <laughs> anyway, that's my classic joke in this video. Smash that like button and hit subscribe because just the fact that I'm asking you to do that proves that I have no dignity left. As a thank you to the doctors for helping him take a big stinky poopy, Terrari offered to demonstrate his act. He found the attending surgeon and said, Oh, thank you so much, doctor, for aiding me in my totally unforeseen illness. Let me eat your watch. And the surgeon went, Okay. And then Terrari said, Really? And then the surgeon said, No. And, and if you do that, I'm going to cut it out of you with a scalpel. Now get the fuck out of my hospital. Okay, that's not what actually happened, because they were speaking French, not English. That story's 100% true, and it really shows how dedicated Terrari was to cramming as much garbage as he could into his gullet. The hospitalization was a bit of a wake-up call for Mr. Terrari Gobblesworth. As Terrari left the infirmary, he got on his knees and prayed. God, Terrari said wiping the entrails of a rat off his lips that somehow he managed to kill and eat while getting down on his knees. I see now that this gift of mine walks a fine line between miracle and curse. Please, Lord, deliver to me a sign as to what my true calling should be. Well, God, as benevolent and ever-loving and kind as he is, decided now was the perfect time for the War of the First Coalition to break out. Terrari noticed people all over Europe began fighting each other and said, Thank you, Lord. I understand now. I shouldn't be killing myself with my strength. I should be killing other people. Terrari enlisted in the French Revolutionary Army, and thanks to a regimented, paid-for eating schedule, he was in good hands as far as always having something to eat. In fact, Terrari was in pretty good luck when it came to choosing to join the French Army while suffering from perpetually peckish disorder. French military rations have been known throughout history to be on the very top of S-tier of the ration tier list, which is a real thing. The UN recently held a ration swap meet between military attachés from each member state. I did a taste test and found that French rations were generally the best. Yep, it must be nice to live in a country that knows how to cook. 
Those French rations. Delicieux. Colonel, what exactly are you... Some of the best food I'd ever tasted, Rose. Anywho, the French military ration largely being top tier since its inception is true, and just to see how that applies to today, I decided to check out what you can find in one if you enlisted right now to avenge Napoleon's ghost. It seems the standard ration that you'll mainly find is the... Here comes some French. Ration de combat individuel réchauffable, which is usually abbreviated to the RCIR and translates to Warmable Individual Combat Ration. I'm going to put the name on the screen so you can just look. You don't have to know what I'm trying to say. Just read. I tried to acquire an RCIR for this video, but the shipping and price of them was actually kind of outrageous to bring to America the greatest country. So instead, I'm just going to talk about it. Acquiring a modern day RCIR IR comes with 14 menu options, each totaling about 3,200 calories. Within, you'll find two servings of the meal of your choice, some complimentary hors d'oeuvres, a soup, some cheese, a cream dessert, salted and sweet crackers, a chocolate bar, a pack of caramels, some gum, various drink mixes such as tea, coffee, and juice, a nougat bar, and some lovely fruit gelatin. My emphasis on this is twofold. One, damn that sounds good. Put a point on the board for the French military. And second of all, this is a lot of food. We're not talking about 3,200 calories jam-packed into like a dense nutritional meal brick or something. This is a full spread of options and stomach content fillers. Now, obviously things would have been a bit different and most likely less plentiful 300 years ago, but let's still make the claim that the French military rations have always put an emphasis on actually satisfying their troops. Well, Terrari wasn't satisfied. At least not with just one. Terare reportedly would almost immediately down his entire designated ration and then would complain he was still hungry. Terare began taking on odd jobs for his fellow soldiers just so they'd give him a share of their meals. And this worked really well. It was so effective that Terare was soon admitted to the army hospital for extreme exhaustion. Before, Terare's condition may have been attributed to eating actual gutter slime or being too poor to afford what human beings with souls could consider real food instead of filling his stomach with a slurry of the finest junkyard offerings. But now Terraria was being well fed at a steady rate and the guy still ends up in an army hospital with exhaustion that's most likely attributed to being malnourished? Now we've gone beyond Terraria being a guy with hollow legs and instead have a bona fide medical marvel on our hands. Doctors don't know what the fuck to do about this one, so they figure if food's what he wants, food's what he'll get and they quadruple his daily rations. So Terari's chilling in the army hospital and he's just finished eating four days worth of military grade food and he says, you know what, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this, I'm still hungry. So he sneaks away to eat food from the finished plates of meals given to other patients. But he's not done. He also begins to raid the hospital trash bins and the gutters outside for something to eat. But that's small time stuff, who cares? His coupe de grace of culinary pleasure comes from the office of the apothecary. An apothecary was like an old timey version of a pharmacist or a medical scientist. His job was to mix things together for patients to treat their afflictions. These mix Mixtures were typically made of things like clay, herbs, charcoal, salt, household remedy type things. And they were often placed on the patient to usually help with infections and wounds. Well, the apothecary of this hospital just so happened to have made a brand new freshly baked batch of pulstices that morning. That's the mixture stuff I was talking about. And Terari ate them the fuck up at the speed at which Batman cries whenever he attends the Wayne Corporation's father-son sack race. So on top of his already generous daily food supply, Terrari is being given three additional rations a day, is doing favors for other soldiers for even more rations, is picking at scraps from absolutely anywhere he can find them, and still... Okay, I sorry, I forgot. I, I gotta get the book, hang on. I got, um, I got a, I got a handbook on things like this. Okay. Okay. Yep. Gotta find the page on Terraria. Hang on. There, there we go. Okay. All right. So. 
one apple. Two pears. Hang on, hang on, sorry. I just, I gotta refresh my memory. Oh, oh, right, 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 okay. There it is. That bitch was still hungry! Keep in mind during all of this that the dude has still not gained a single fucking pound. Terari had a nightmarish, creepy pasta appearance his whole life. He was as skinny as a rail and was reported to have a devilishly wide mouth full of disgustingly stained teeth. And whenever he ate, his stomach would bulge and distend like my pants whenever I decided to replay The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. He stank so bad you could smell him up to a hundred feet away. He sweated harder than an American business owner being asked what country their products are made in. The skin from his continually enlarged stomach became totally elastic when it was empty and he could whip it around back and forth like his hair when he does the nay nay. His eyes were permanently bloodshot, his body emitted a visible vapor, he only ever had diarrhea, and the man could not stop burping and farting. It's theorized that his name Terrare is a nickname because it comes from the French slogan Bom Bom Terrare, which roughly translates to English as either boom goes the dynamite or damn look at that fucker eat. I'm not sure I have to do more additional research. So Terrare's hospital stay is coming to a close and he wakes up in the morning and he yawns and he stretches out and says good morning USA. Oh, I think I'll kill something and eat it. Oh, well, maybe not in that order. When a regal Mr. Baron Percy enters the room. Baron Pierre Francois Percy was the chief surgeon at the military hospital Terrari was admitted to, and his memoirs on Terrari's case are actually where most of the info we know about him are pulled from. Percy grabbed Terrari on the shoulder and said, Oh, not so fast, you weird little fuck. You're an enlisted soldier and this is a military hospital, which means you're legally my baby. Bitch. We're gonna find out what's going on in your creepy little tummy of yours, and then I'm gonna be, I mean, we're gonna be rich. The French military ordered Terrari to stay at the hospital while Baron Percy and another surgeon named Dr. Corville conducted all sorts of experiments on him to find out, hey, how come that guy gets four military lunchables and I only get one? The doctors following the Hippocratic Oath to the letter decided it was finally time to push Mother Nature as far as she could go with human experiments. Here's a couple more things that Terrari did while gorging an entire hospital dry. He found dead horses outside, and instead of beating them, he ate the flesh right off of their corpses. He grabbed an entire eel, gnawed its head off, and then swallowed the entire body whole. You really shouldn't do that. Check out an eel's skeleton. You see all these bones? Those things are like tiny knives in your body, and that ain't good. Most of you have probably seen my award-winning video on the guy who swallowed knives for fun, and well, we all know what happened to him, so... Don't do that, Terare. What is wrong with you? He once ate a dinner. Oh, there's more. He once ate a dinner that could feed 15 people. Oh, I'm sorry, there's more. He once ate a dinner that could feed 15 people and also drank four gallons of milk with it. Okay, I want you to right now look up the gallon of milk challenge and read up on how well the human does at processing large amounts of milk fat in one sitting. Spoilers, it's not very good at it. Now remember that this guy did that four times in a row. Now the surgeons were raising an eyebrow or two. I can't, I can't do just one eyebrow raise like the rock. So I'm gonna do both like this. Pretend I'm more curious and less permanently surprised. They thought what all modern industrialists think when they see something incredible. How can we turn this into a weapon? One time, Dr. Corville approached French General Alexandre de Beauharnais, who we'll just call General Alexandra for simplicity, and he devised a plan to test how good Terrari would be as a spy. Terrari was given a tiny wooden box with a message in it to eat. He then had his patented pure diarrhea movement the next day, and the box came out with the message perfectly intact. It probably read, haha, this was in a guy's ass. Terrari was dragged to an 
assembly of French commanders to demonstrate his incredible espionage bowel movements for them. The brass loved this because it meant he basically was immune to being strip searched. Terari did his anal telegram trick again and everyone applauded. For his valiant efforts in eating and shitting, Terari was rewarded with a wheelbarrow filled with 30 pounds of raw bull lungs and liver. Now Terari expressed humble gratitude for the entrails and took the wheelbarrow back to his home country where it could be used to create delicious blood sausage and meat pies for him and the whole time. And no, I'm fucking kidding. He ate all of it on the spot for the amusement of the French leadership because of course that's what he did. In a move straight out of a James Bond film, Terari saved the day by shitting his pants. He was now an official spy of the French Revolutionary Army. He was also an official joke of the French Revolutionary Army. Oh, they were totally convinced of his ability to create coded ciphers cross enemy encampments through his colon, but they all assumed his eating fixations were due to a mental disorder and were hesitant to trust him with crucial military documents. Terare was pulled aside by General Alexandra, who told him, Terare, you're my big strong man, ain't ya? Daddy needs you to be a big boy and go on a top secret mission, okay, sport? I need you to swallow this very important message and deliver it to a colonel who's currently in a Prussian prison. You'll always be daddy's number one message swallowing baby. Oh, and son, the Prussians are the prototype Germans in case any of the YouTube viewers hearing this story are confused. Okay, my little man, you got this champ. I'm gonna go out for cigarettes. Terrari disguised himself as a German peasant and embarked on his mission. Once he arrived on site, he immediately attracted tons of unwanted attention due to three very conspicuous things about him. One, he continually yelled, Hello, I am just an ordinary German peasant. Where is the military prison I've heard such good things about? Two, he didn't speak a word of German. And three, when questioned by a nearby soldier, he unhinged his jaw and swallowed the man whole like a Burmese python. The jig was up. Terrari's impeccable disguise had been seen through. He was caught and imprisoned, ironically probably in the exact one that he was trying to deliver a message to. Curious to see what a freak's penis looked like, Prussian guards strip searched Terrari, and after finding nothing of interest aside from a fat hog, they brought him before their commander. Terrari was tortured with one of the most devious interrogations ever devised. The Prussians sat him in a chair. One that's getting on my microphone cord. They sat him in a chair. And they brought in their best negotiator. And he sat at a table across from Terrari. And he'd lean in close. And while staring him in the eyes, he would calmly, yet authoritatively say, Please? Please tell us if you're a spy, please? Now, of course, Terrari, the man of iron guts, would protest. But the interrogator would follow it up with, Oh, please! Come on, pretty please! Please tell us who you work for! Come on, man! I'll be your best friend! Please! What do I gotta do? I'll give you a dollar! Come on, dude! Bro, be a friend! Fuck you! This went on for an entire 24 hours until the interrogation officer finally said, Okay, fuck this. Let's just beat the shit out of him until he talks. And so he talked. Terrari spilled the beans you know what? Actually, Terrari would never ever allow beans to spill. He would just eat them, and if they did, he would eat wherever they spilled. Okay, um... Terrari spilled his guts on the- nope, that- that doesn't work either. It's not Terrari, nope. Uh... Terrari let the cat out of the bag. It, uh, nope, mm mm, mm. Terrari would eat the cat. Would have snapped its spine, made it unable to walk. Why is it impossible to write a clever analogy for confessing when it comes to Terrari? I can't even see that he cleared the air because there were visible stink lines coming from him at all times. Okay, fine. After 24 hours of beatings and interrogations, Terrari followed the US military's example and dropped the bomb in explaining that he was a French spy who had swallowed secret intelligence documents. And the only way to get them out was for him to negotiate a prisoner exchange. It was time for them to finally let the brown hostage go. The 
The soldiers rallied Terraria up and chained him to a toilet, where they waited another six hours for him to finally shit out the wooden message box. The commander, presumably after he applied a wet wipe to it, opened the box and read the note inside and well, turns out this was all just a big misunderstanding. The Prussians and Terraria assumed his butthole was the key to a secret French military operation, but it was as they would have expected full of nothing but shit. Flashback to when Terare is under General Alexander's arm. Woo, do the, do, put me in black and white. Put a dream halo around me in the bottom corner so people aren't confused. Put flashback um, and put a picture of, uh, let's say, Flash Gordon, that old timey serial hero. So they can go, oh, Flash, like flashback. That's. That's really cute. Put him over there. Anywho, remember how the general told Terari to make the team proud by delivering crucial military intelligence? Well, it turns out, while Terari was hyping himself up in that moment, Alexander turned his head to the side and admitted straight to the camera, ha ha ha, while this gastrointestinal gallivant thinks he's conducting an important mission, he's actually just an asshole with an asshole. There really isn't anything General Alexander didn't lie about. I mean, he didn't even come back after getting those cigarettes, but whatever, everyone's father does that at some point. I mean, mine did. Everyone has had a dad that left them at some point, usually to get cigarettes or go to the store or, um, you know, on the way home from work. Like, you know, that's just, yeah, no, no one doesn't have a dad that didn't do that. Let me know in the comments how long your dad left. How long ago? Let me know in the comments how long ago your dad left for cigarettes and didn't come back to prove that I'm not crazy. That everyone's father, it's like a tradition in most countries, everyone's dad left and d didn't love that. I mean, d didn't want to burden the family with their uh, needs. Whatever, childhood trauma is not important. Like how the message that Terari was given was also not important. It literally said nothing more than, hey, how you doing? You get this message, Mr. Uh, prisoner? Cool. And hey, what's up with the Prussians? Write back if you can, and send it to me via this guy's butthole. It's all pretty logical if you think about it. Why trust a newly recruited spy with a brand new unconventional smuggling method with anything of true importance? Put the guy through a test run and see how it goes. No harm, no foul. Everyone read the note and had a long, hearty laugh. What a blunder, am I right, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Terari was sentenced to be hung at the gallows. But maybe the Prussian commander's heart grew three sizes that day, and he was astonished by the human spirit of a man who was willing to smuggle messages via his scat. So he took Terari down from the gallows and released him near the French line. Oh, but not before severely beating him again for good measure. Perhaps it's because he's a gigantic pussy, but it was about this time that Terari wished to quit military service. He went back to the army hospital where he was experimented on and begged Baron Percy to treat him, saying he would do anything to cure his affliction, even if it meant entering the super scary labyrinth of fear. First, they tried to cure him with known remedies from the time. Laudanum, wine vinegar, Sprite, tobacco pills, Campbell's chicken noodle soup, and even the incredible miracle cure regiment of Robitussin and Vicks Vapor Rub were applied. But nothing was effective at keeping the feisty Frenchman out of his favorite filth feasts. Then it was time to tackle the anti-American method. They put Terrari on a strict diet. Surprisingly, it didn't work at all, and unsurprisingly, it was because Terrari would sneak out at night and steal meat scraps from nearby butcher shops. This part's pretty impressive, because he had to actually dropkick nearby stray dogs to keep them from stealing his beloved treasures of rot. So during this and all the rest of the upcoming experiments I'm going to talk about, nurses continually tell Dr. Percy to commit Terari to a local asylum and be done with it. But Percy kept waving them off, and it's shockingly not because they were women in the 1800s, but it was because by all measures he didn't see anything mentally wrong with Terare. His problem was entirely physical, and aside from his absolutely insane cravings, he was as lucid as anyone else. Well, that and the guy really wanted to conduct more government-sanctioned human experiments on him, and I can't really fault him for that. That sounds awesome. Now things take a dark turn. 
while as dark as a story about a guy who's a bona fide detritus devourer can get. Not just once, but several times, Terrari tried to sneak into patients' rooms to slurp down their blood like a butt-fucking vampire. Bloodletting, the dumbest medical thing we've ever done ever, was still a common treatment during this time, and Terrari used that opportunity to creep in on the operation and have himself a mighty glug. But that wasn't enough. Of course it wasn't enough. This is Terrari we're talking about. Y'all remember how this man totally misheard the famous phrase as eating a dead horse? Well, he probably also mistranslated a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do into a man's gotta chew a man he can chew. Because, and we all saw this coming, it's time for cannibalism. And not just regular cannibalism, mind you. Oh, no, 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 not for dear sweet Terrare. Cadaver cannibalism. Our favorite Frenchman was caught sneaking into the morgue to eat the corpses. Unfortunately, in the same way that those with a taste of beef often want to try veal, Terrare decided that regular dead people just wasn't enough. It was time to go big or go home. And in the world of extreme omnivores, to go big is to go small. A 14-month-old child disappeared from the hospital one day. While we don't actually know what happened to him, some people have a pretty convincing guess. And it's one that probably has your hand over your mouth like this and your eyes bulged out if you're a 45-year-old conservative mother of two toddlers who watches my videos for some weird reason. Baron Percy refused to comment on the whole incident entirely, and so the patients and staff were sure convinced of what had happened. They formed an angry mob to chase Terrare out. Four years pass. It's now 1798. These years are presumably filled with Terrari partaking in all the finest gutter grub, dumpster delicacies, scrap stew, junk jambalaya, debris dumplings, and trash tacos that a daring appetite can afford. Baron Percy is sitting in his office doing Baron stuff, I don't know, probably playing two games of chess at once like Barons do, and he receives a letter from a Dr. Tessier over at the hospital in Versailles, who mentions that they have a particular patient there that wishes to see him. And wouldn't you know it, it was the missing toddler, all grown up at a healthy age of five and ready to clear Terrare's name. No, I'm kidding, it was Terrare. And his condition's grown worse. Way worse. He's now entirely bedridden. And of course, everyone attending summarizes that all of those years of swallowing sanitation sludge is to blame. But it might actually not be. For whatever reason, maybe to rid himself of a witch's curse or perhaps prevent one from ever starting, two years prior to this hospital visit, Terrari swallowed a golden fork. I already shamelessly plugged my video on the guy who ate knives, so I don't really need to reiterate just how dumb of an idea this was. But really, the dumbest thing here was Terrari thinking this golden fork was the cause of his suffering. I mean, I've been secretly wearing gold-lined pants this whole video to foreshadow what's gonna happen, and I'm totally fine. It was actually tuberculosis, and Baron Percy recognized the symptoms immediately. As Baron Percy stroked Terrari's delicate head of presumably disgustingly greasy hair, he looked up at Percy with love in his eyes and said, Oh, Baron, is this going to make my violent infinite diarrhea worse? And Baron Percy, choking back tears, said, Now, now, sweet, lovely Terrare, even when it does, and oh, it would normally, even when it does, you needn't worry about that, my precious little boy, because you're probably gonna die within the hour. And then he died within the hour. Terrari's corpse was said to have rotted at an accelerated rate and was so grotesque that all of the surgeons at the hospital refused to perform an autopsy. But Dr. Tessier, who's new to all of these Terrari shenanigans, pipes up and says, okay, they hold the fuck on. Have you heard what this guy did his whole life? You're telling me that we've got the bottomless black hole pit of a cadaver on our slab right now, and you don't want to cut him open? What about the golden fork in him that could be worth a whopping zero dollars and 1.2 pennies? Cut the fucker open and see how God made a mess of his most beloved creations. 
First, let's talk about what the autopsy didn't find. The actual reasoning behind Terare deciding to eat his way out of reality is still debated. Some notes claim he suffered from extreme hyperthyroidism, meaning he would always be hungry and never retain any weight. Others speculate that he had a damaged amygdala, meaning his self-preservation functions would be all out of whack, which means at all times he would feel like he was starving and his overeating would never cross the danger threshold in his mind. Then there's the classic hormone imbalance explanation, which means means that his digestive system just couldn't absorb any nutrients, so food would just pass through him and never have any effect. The medical records and knowledge of the time just weren't elaborate enough to properly diagnose and treat him, so it will forever remain speculation on how that silly bitch ate so goddamn much. But now let's talk about what doctors were able to find when they cut him open. Terrari's esophagus was basically tailor-made to defy all laws of human gastrology. The tube from his mouth to his stomach was grotesquely wide, and at the right angle, doctors could peer directly into his stomach down his mouth. His entire body was basically made of pus with how infected and inflamed everything was, and the man could accurately be described as a walking ulcer. Each one of his digestive organs was abnormally large, and the crown jewel of all was his stomach, said to be so swollen that it took up most of his body cavity where, like, the rest of your organs should go. Oh, and finally, to directly quote Wikipedia, the source that I and every other YouTuber that you watch on this website shamelessly rips off to make their videos, no fork was ever found. Oh, there you have it. That's our story. Darari's dead. Good night. What, you're still here? You want more? <sighs> okay, fine. During my research, I happened to find a good number of people throughout history with other cases of unusual dietary escapades. And if you like really wacky, goofed up cases of picking the wrong thing to munch on your whole life, don't worry, there's plenty to talk about. Now, if I was a pathetic degenerate making videos purely for money and fame like a loser, this is where I would ask you to like and subscribe and all that pointless bullshit that creators really shouldn't have to do if their content is good enough to warrant people supporting it on their own. So instead, let me just tease you a bit with an upcoming video on some other eating oddities throughout history that I'll eventually make. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Will I? It could happen. You know, I, I always do things like this, but... Okay, let me put it this way. Would a man who caught all 709 Pokemon in Pokemon Y leave things unfinished? I didn't think so. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm done. There's stuff in the description for you to check out, like energy drink discount codes to support my channel, uh, my second channel that also supports my channel. I do a lot of stuff, a lot of content, and it's all good. Bye!